Hello everyone, welcome to Insecurity episode 19. Today we want to talk about not the password, but the behind the scenes on the server side. The encryption and everything they use to keep you safe with your long complicated password. So once again we have Tom Webster and I want to start off with a question to him. Tom, do you have or have you bought anything off Kickstarter recently? Lots of stuff. A, a large number of things. So do you treat Kickstarter as a store? And you're not supposed to, remember? No, that. no, not at all. No, I've so Kickstarter, for those who don't know, it's kind of kind of a crowdsourced investment platform or, or a crowdsourced funding platform where instead of you buying stock in a company to fund them, somebody says, Hey, I want to write a children's book about, you know, this thing. I've got these characters, I just need some money to get it published. And I think it's gonna be a great idea and now, if you think it's a great idea, give me five bucks, and I'll give you a, a digital ebook. And you're just like, oh, yeah, that sounds like a good idea. I'd love to see this book get made. So, you know, you send them five bucks, and you're funding their dream. Uh, and it, Kickstarter does everything from people who are making pottery to, you know, garage bands to people making books to video games, anything you can think of, anything people are trying to create or make or build – Funded on Kickstarter, and now, they do have some crazy requirements, but that's not really what we're talking about. Right. Some rules and stuff like that. Right. If you if you say, hey, you know, I would love for you to fund my you know, trip out to, I don't know, pick a place, my trip out to Las Vegas, and I will gamble your money away. You can't do that. You can't spend the money on yourself. It's got to be for like a project you're working on, and it can't be a project to see how much money you can lose in blackjack. But the point was, so you bought something off Kickstarter, and did you get an email? I did. I did get an email. And what uh, did this email say? This email says, attention Kickstarter user. Uh, oops. We got hacked. Your password, or your, uh, your hash of your password is now in the hands of some nefarious terrorist group and can and will be used against you. Well, that's not exactly what it said, but it was close, close enough. Well, the sad part was, and what I'm trying to stall while I pull up the, the blog post, was that the Kickstarter didn't actually solve the problem. Not solve the problem, I mean, they didn't actually notice it until law enforcement on the weekend caught it. And, and, uh, not that that's any better or worse, it's just uh, that's a little bit unnerving. So, mm -hmm. well, so it was just a little, so I have not bought anything off Kickstarter. I, I have very good impulse control. I have to make sure this product is really good and before I actually give money. The one thing with Kickstarter that really bothers me is the fact that once you give the money and it gets funded, you have to hope that you chose the right people and everything else because because they could and have in the past walked away with the money. Most of the time they don't, but there is a lot of vaporware and it's a li and it is a little scary. Oh yeah, and and you can't treat Kickstarter like a store. You're quite literally investing in someone else's dreams and ideas and you know hopes. And sometimes you know we're we've all been there. Sometimes those hopes and dreams don't come together. So, for instance, I am not leading the, the new Journey reunion band tour that I've always wanted to be running right now. One day I think I'll get there, but I'm not about to post it on Kickstarter just yet. But, you know, I invested in uh, setting a cop statue in the middle of Detroit because Philadelphia's got a statue of Rocky. Why not have a statue of RoboCop in Detroit? That's pretty cool. And we haven't seen anything come from that quite yet but I'm still hoping. So I have the blog post here, and it starts off with, on Wednesday night, law enforcement officials contacted Kickstarter and alerted us that hackers had sought and gained unauthorized access to some of our customers' data. Upon learning this, we immediately closed the security breach and began stre strengthening security measures throughout the Kickstarter system. And they want to know two things, and I'm going to skip through. No credit card data of any kind was accessed by hackers. Well, that's a good thing because I'm oh, yeah. sure, I'm sure you're you're tired of switching out your credit cards now, <laughs> three times in the last four months, something like that. Oh, it's awful. 
So that's okay. So now I got to get another credit card. No, you don't have to. No credit card data was uh, stolen in any kind. And I think the reason was is because they use Amazon payments. Yeah, so the credit card details, so really all the payment details, they're using Amazon kind of like people use PayPal, um, where you say, yeah, sure, this is a confirmed payment, and if the project actually gets funded, they'll go through Amazon, and Amazon will charge you, and then Amazon will give the money to Kickstarter. it. So it means that you can rely on Amazon's infrastructure, their tech, their security, their safety net of their payment systems internally, to run your business. It's a really cool system. It's like, you know, when you set up a store, you don't want to have to make a credit card processing system. That's ridiculous. Why would you take that risk? You know, just use PayPal, use Amazon payments. And for what I understand also with Kickstarter, and this is on a side note, they're using OAuth, so you can use your uh, Google Plus or Twitter or Amazon information to authenticate you. Yes. So so it looks like so far everything is okay. They got a, they got hacked. What else? What do we have to worry about? So it's saying no credit card data. That's good. But your personal information was. Your access information is included, and I'm losing it. Um, usernames, email addresses, mailing addresses, phone numbers, and encrypted passwords. Actual passwords were not revealed. However, it is possible for a malicious person with enough computing power to guess and crack an encrypted pas password, particularly a weak or obvious one. I actually right. like this phrase. So I'm not happy that, or you're not happy that that your personal identifiable information is gone, but you have an encrypted password. Exactly. So with Kickstarter, um, the the way they were, uh, basically, I, I guess we should go into how websites store your password and compare it to what you put into that little box to you know authenticate you to get you into the site. So. You know, it, at first thought, you're just like, well, yeah, I put a password into the box. They save the password, and if they match, they let me in. And some websites did that, especially early on. A lot of websites just put the password in plain text. They just took whatever you put in for your password and stored it. And it's really the bad thing to do. It's a, a really awful thing to do because... In this case, someone broke in, they got access to the entire database. Imagine if all of these passwords were just open. So let do you use the same password for Twitter and for Facebook? Well, if Twitter gets hacked, if they lose their passwords, they can now get into your Facebook and, you know, I hope you don't use that for your bank accounts. Oh, no, you do? Well, now they can get into your bank. So... Instead, websites do what's called password hashing. There's, there's a piece of code that takes some input text, runs it through a one-way function, a mathematical function, and turns it into this gibberish thing, this long blob of text that's gibberish and you know, doesn't make any sense to anyone. Um, but the key is when you run that same piece of text, when you run your password, through that algorithm again, it will give you the same string of garbage, the exact same. Even if you change just one character, you add a dot, you change you now an I to a one, any small change will completely change the random garbage that's put out from this algorithm. So it's a really clever way to kind of store passwords without storing the actual passwords. So instead, you put in a password, it runs it through the algorithm, and then it compares the garbage. If the garbage matches, you're in. Now, a lot of smart people with a lot of big graphics cards and big computing devices um, have made giant tables of this garbage data. And they said, okay, we're going to hash everything. We're going to make every combination of characters from zero characters all the way to six characters, and we're going to make a table of garbage. And that way, when we get you know, someone's garbage from a website, we just look it up on this table and know what their password is, and it'll get them in. That's the issue with weak hashing al algorithms. It's really, really easy to do that, especially with a lot of big computing power. So what you have to do, you have to either do tricks with adding data to the thing, or... You can use what's called a secure hashing algorithm, something that, like uh, bcrypt, where it's really, really slow to generate that table. I insanely slow. I mean, they would take years, tens of years, to generate a table that big of bcrypt data. Well, let's let's take a let's take 
back burner for a second. So let's continue. So they're saying we have we we encrypted your password. They should have said we hashed your password, but either way, your password is this nonsense of garbage. So that's a good thing. And if you want to know if your password is stored in plain text or at least uh, hashed, do a password reset on pick a site that you're concerned about. Do a password reset. If they send you your password in an email, they are storing it in plain text. And then you need to write an angry letter to somebody alerting them that this is really bad. Because that's what happens. You forget your password. You do the password reset. They send you an email and says, your password is monkey. And you're like, oh, thank you. And you put monkey in and it works. Then you go on your way. While that sounds convenient to the average person, if they steal the database, now they have everyone's. It's in plain text as in everyone can see what it is. And that doesn't help you because you'll still have to change your password again and all the other ones. So what they should do if you want to know that it's hashed, is they send you a file that says, an email that we reset your password. Your password is now some six character, eight character, ten character nonsense, but because you're on the computer, you can copy and paste it in. And so what they're doing is saying, we actually have no way to guess your password. We just have this hash. We're just going to reset it to whatever we want to, and you're going to have this thing, and it's going to last 24, 48 hours before you're going to have to do it again. So it, that's what it looks like Kickstarter did, and we're going to continue. And then they go on to say, to change your password, this is how you do it. And, oh, by the way, they tell you, change it for everything else where you use this password, which was a good, nice thing to say. Not that you now you want to go and change all these passwords. Or please start with LastPass or 1Password. They didn't mention KeyPass, but LastPass, which we agree on, is the best, mm -hmm. and 1Password. Which, which is a, basically a Mac op, a Mac platform that does sort of what LastPass does, but a lot prettier, not necessarily better. So right. then they go into, we're incredibly sorry this happened. They tell you, they they say that they're working with it. This is their, this is their trying to save face. Like we're tr we're doing our best. Once we get information, we will let you know. Right, and and honestly. <sighs> I, I don't know what the breach is, so it's hard for me to say that they were doing everything right because it could have been a glaringly obvious breach. It could have been something that was really technical and hard to guard against. But honestly, when you look at the companies that have had passwords leaked, I'm, I'm putting Kickstarter at, you know, it, at least up in the top ranges of the companies that have handled this the best. Because first of all, the passwords were hashed in a secure manner. It's going to take, if somebody wants to target you and get your password, they're going to have to work at it. So with LinkedIn, when LinkedIn lost their passwords, they were using an insecure hashing algorithm. They were still hashing your passwords, but anyone who wanted to crack them and get at your, your information just had to, you know, have a $150 graphics card and two hours of spare time, and they could crack the entire list of millions of passwords. Just just like that, just stupidly easy. But with this, if you had the Kickstarter list, if you went online to whatever black market they're selling this on and you bought that list, you're going to have to spend a huge amount of time trying to crack these things. It is not trivial. It is very difficult, very computationally expensive for a computer to crack bcrypt encrypted passwords. And now you've got to try to do it for all the users. And it's and Kickstarter, as soon as they learned about it, they came out in public. They said, hey, this happened. This is what we were hashing it with. They gave us technical details so we would know how bad it was. And honestly, yeah, we lost our email addresses. You're going to get more spam. Yeah, you lost your phone number. You're going to get some robocalls. And yeah, you lost your name. I mean, it's not good. It's never good when this kind of thing happened. But... As far as breaches go, this is probably the best outcome. Y you lost some identifying information. You lost some stuff that will get you some more spam. But your password is relatively safe, and your credit card's fine. So i got to hand it to them. It's not as bad as it could have been. Well, so how are the passwords encrypted? Like you said, SHA-1, which is an encryption algorithm, bcrypt for the newer passwords. So 
the the problem is, and what they're afraid of is, so hackers also know what the most commonly used passwords are. They've done anal studies on this, and and it used to be password. Password being the most used password. Now it's uh, what is it? It's one, two, three, four, five, six, something like that. So they're looking, they're sorting by hashes that are the same. And they're going to take all those hashes, and the ones that have the most, I guess, the most common hashes, they're going to try, and they're going to see, is it password, is it monkey, is it Apple, is it one of the top ten? And if they can hit that, they don't need everybody, but if the top ten, if password's used by 10% of the people, they just got 10% of the people's information. And while that's not a huge success, it's still better than not being able to get anything. So that's right. why they're saying if you had a strong password, you're most likely safe because no one knowing they put this on there, the hackers are trying to figure out which one it is. They're saying, oh, it's encrypted and decrypt. This is not worth our time. But right. let's take the number one most used hash and go from there, or a string of garbage. If it's used a, a million times, well, we can we, we might we can lower that guess down considerably knowing what the top 100 passwords are. Well, that's the cool thing about Bcrypt, because you can do that with SHA hashes, right? One of the insecure password storage hashing algorithms. So you can take, you know, the, the string of garbage, and you say, yeah, you know, 100 people had this string of garbage, so their password is automatically the same. We know that, because when we put, you know, this text in, we get the same garbage out. So you can do that with SHA. With Bcrypt, they add what's called salt. They add extra junk data that they store into the password. So even if people were using the same passwords, even if 100 people that were on Bcrypt that were using the newer form of the hashing algorithm that Kickstarter put in used the same passwords, the random junk looks completely different. And it's stupidly, stupidly hard to try to connect those people. You're right. I'm sorry. I... I forgot about that. I just remembered Bcrypt was it's going to slow down the, the guess process. Mm -hmm. I forgot about the salt. Going down in the FAQs, they're saying, here's another question, and this is always a good thing to look for. I use Facebook to log into Kickstarter. Is my login compromised? And the answer is no. As a precaution, we reset all Facebook login credentials. Facebook's users can simply reconnect when they come to Kickstarter. Which is a great thing because, and this is a topic for another episode, OAuth, where you can use your credentials from another website that you trust more than Kickstarter to have that information. So people who use Facebook to authenticate themselves, all Kickstarter did was flip the switch to say, you are no longer authenticated and got to click the button again. Oh yeah, it's great. And that means if you're using the same password for Kickstarter that you are using on Facebook for some reason... You know, you're you're no longer authorized. It's it's fantastic. So OAuth makes at least for a website developer makes everything really easy because if you only use OAuth, if you don't bother with usernames or passwords, you, know, you can just say, yeah, look, it, it's Facebook's job or it's Google's job or it's Twitter's job to maintain your username and password. We don't want any of it. We're gonna do our thing, and your user information can stay with those guys. And on that note, let's just talk to say that if you if you're running into a website and they use OAuth, which is all I mean, really simply, all that is the button that says log in with your Facebook account or your Twitter account. Use those, especially if it's a website that you're just going to comment in the comment the comment section because if you have to fill out all this information, go through an email loop, and create a username, create a password. That's one more. That's one more data point, another uh, vector that they can get you on. If you use right. Facebook, you have to have that Facebook password supremely secure, or your Twitter password. I think Twitter's even better because Twitter, you can put like a random name. You can have a random Twitter account, and no one will know. But you can put that in, and if the site gets hacked, all they do is they flip the switch, they reset all the, the Twitter tokens, the Facebook tokens, and you just have to re-authenticate. It takes one second. Yeah, it's it's easy and honestly, a company like Facebook, Twitter, Google, they get these, you know, basically they get hacked or they get attempted hacks thrown on them all the time. There's all kinds of people trying to break into Facebook and Twitter. So they're they're used to the security game and they've got 
you know, very well-paid, very smart security people working on their teams to keep your stuff safe. So it's really smart to trust those guys over, you know, some random web developer who just stood up an authentication system and is storing your password in plain text. So it's... I mean, like we said, the whole point of today is to talk about, so what's on the backside? So your Kickstarter, if you invested in Kickstarter or the projects, your, your, some of your information got hacked. The good part was your, Amazon, your credit card was secured through Amazon. And again, if Amazon gets hacked, you have, we have bigger problems than your credit card. Yes, yes okay. we do. And if you use the Facebook authentication you're, or Twitter, you're fine. I mean, you just have to go back and reauthorize it. And again, for another episode, we'll explain that. So so the problem becomes is, and we keep on saying this, who, you're the CEO of Kickstarter, you're the CEO of XYZ.com company, and you go to your security guys and they tell you, and you ask them, what do we should do for better security? And they're going to say, well, we really should use Bcrypt. Your first question as a CEO should be, how much is this going to cost? And right. guaranteed, most of the time, the answer is going to be more than you want to hear. And the problem with that is, it does, there's no benefit to the, there's no, see, the, the customer doesn't see that benefit. It just costs you money, but it prevents a hack like this. So people weigh the risks. And we see yeah. this all the time. Yeah, and there there are companies, and I've had conversations with companies about this type of security, and they say, well, what does it buy me? I could either get this much raw material for things I'm making that I sell that make me money, or on the off chance I get targeted in some drive-by hack, why on earth would I spend this money? It, you know... I can't sell to security people. I can't say, oh, yeah, but I've got the most secure site, so you should buy my tires or widgets or whatever I'm selling. And that doesn't work. It's not a great marketing line. And so far, you know, especially in the, um, in, in the general marketplace, security doesn't sell at all. You might get two or three people that are really interested in security to buy your stuff, but for the most part, it doesn't work. So it is just throwing money away, but you are way, way better off throwing that money away and not having the issue that, you know, that Target had and not having the issue that LinkedIn had where, look, your user's information got compromised, but by the way, now their passwords are all over the Internet and everyone knows them, and it's your fault. It's way better to avoid that. And I don't know what the legal status is. We always need a we, we should we should get a lawyer on the show. We really should. Well, I mean, I'm sure there's going to be class action lawsuits at least in the Target case. I don't mm -hmm. think Kickstarter is going to. I mean, they they were very forthcoming with everything. But if you're not they forthcoming, were. the problem is you can see legal status. You can have a lawsuit go against you that your information and how much is that going to cost? That'll probably run you out of business. And at that point. Obviously, all the money in the world should have been thrown at security. But it's mm -hmm. a game that people play, and unfortunately, the average consumer doesn't really care. And when they don't right. care, there's no reason to do it. And I just want to, we have a few minutes left. I want to go back to another hack that happened, I don't know, about three weeks ago, and that's Snapchat. So we talked about how Kickstarter came about, and they were very forthcoming. They told us as much as they could without revealing too much information. They told you what to do. They told you what to look out for. Then you have Snapchat, where they oh. said that they were hacked, but they didn't even say we were sorry. They just said, oh, by the way, you were hacked. Change your password. Yeah, yeah. All of your information has been lost to the ether. So, so the, guy, the guy that did the hack went up to Snapchat and he said, hey, you've got this major vulnerability. This is an issue. And Snapchat said, eh, eh, go away. You're bothering us. So, you know, he waited a while. He, he waited the appropriate amount of time between disclosing and then publicly blowing up the security breach. And he, he said, hey, here's a security breach on Snapchat. They refused to fix it. Have fun. And a bunch of information got stolen. A ton of information got stolen. Just... Because it was easy. It would, would have been easy to fix, but they didn't care. And, uh, you know, you, you look today, there's still that vulnerability hanging out there. So I would stay away from Snapchat if you are at all 
concerned about security in any manner. Snapchat itself is an insecure platform, and they do not take security seriously. So I wouldn't give them your time, money, or you know, add eyeballs. And the sad part is, it's one of it's it's one of the largest growing platforms, and most people they don't care. They get that little uh, what's it called? They get that little badge at the bottom that says that they were that they were secure as of this time. You know the little badge I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. Like I mean, all the popular web stores have it. It's just like, oh, Verisign trusted us, or we have a we're we're I don't want to say Verisign because that's not true. We are secure, whatever that means. No, mm -hmm. the button was the 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 JavaScript code was just copied and pasted at the bottom. Yeah. I mean, it's it's literally that, and and you have to really do your research. Now the problem is, is that you want to use Snapchat. You want to play said game. You want to use said app. So you're just gonna whatever. We'll deal with it later. And that's why we stress having putting the the least amount of information you can, reading the permissions, going through making a really complicated password with LastPass so you don't even know. And the worst thing that can happen is if it, if that site gets hacked, it's only that site. And since you have you have access to the information, hopefully you didn't put too much in it. Right, right. You've got to start thinking about, you know, how much do I trust the company with my data? And weighing that against the benefits the company would offer you. Is it really worth, you know, putting in your, your email address, phone number, and the password used for online banking into some random blog so you can make a comment? The eh, answer is probably not. So think about that. And, I mean... Like and we keep on saying it. We need a whole show on just on just what information is important versus what inf or permissions on Android apps to discuss exactly mm -hmm. that. But again, when you install Snapchat, they go, "We need access to your contacts." So what do you do? Okay, all that means what you just did is you sent Snapchat all your contacts. So when it got hacked, it has all of that. And unfortunately, the pictures that you posted on Snapchat, and hopefully they were in the right, in they were they were with the mission statement of Snapchat and not anything else. <laughs> it's a it's a social network of sharing emotions. I think that's mm. what it's called. Whatever that means. Okay, <laughs> I have nothing else. I think that's it for me. So again, if you had a Kickstarter account, change your password. Uh, just. Be vigilant to those emails, and if you do get an email like that, be vigilant. Change your password. Start start investing in LastPass or any of the other password management systems, and let's go from there. Oh yeah. Okay, guys, let's we're gonna end and let's say good night. Hey everyone. Okay, have a good night, everybody. Bye. <laughs>